next we will uh, we'll come next we will come to the seat losses right so because cable we have seen the seat is there either lead or aluminum so when alternating current flows in the core of a uh, in the core of a cable the core and seat actually it acts like your primary and secondary of an air core transformer this way you have to imagine therefore voltage will induce in the seat right so when alternating current flows in the core of a cable the core and the seat act as the primary and secondary of an air core transformer this way you have to imagine therefore what will happen an emf is induced in the seat right therefore uh, an emf is induced in the seat leading to flow of eddy currents and longitudinal circulating currents but this current give rise to the seat losses so there will be some power loss in the seat the losses due to eddy current in the seat are usually negligible except in very large cables right uh, very large cable means high voltage cables right so uh, or uh, at the same time long very long cables right in uh, terms of kilometer so otherwise that eddy current loss uh, is negligible now for three phase cables circulating currents are important only when three separate single core cables or a three core cable with each core having separate seat are used uh, that is in a three phase cable that circulating currents will be there right and this has importance when three separate single core cables or a three core cable with each core having separate seat you have if you use in three core belted cables uh, twice belted has been written so the three core belted cable or a three core screen cable with only a single seat carrying all the three core all the three core the magnetic fields of the three core are partially mutually compensated and the circulating currents are reduced actually that in a three core belted cable right or three core screen cables with only a single seat covering all the your three belts i don't know whether i have diagram here or not right so i don't have the diagram here that all it is it is there also three core screen cable with only a single seat covering all the three cores the magnetic fields of the three cores are partially mutually compensated and the circulating currents are reduced but still seat loss will happen the seat losses are greater in aluminum uh, seat cables than the lead seat cables now when the seats of the three single core cables are not bonded or bonded at one end only circulating currents uh, cannot flow but induced voltage appear between the seat and another i mean when the seat of the three single core cables if you have sir are not bonded or bonded at one end only then circulating currents cannot flow this is true but induced voltages appear between the seat and your what you call uh, uh, your uh, between seat and another right this way uh, that voltage will appear between one seat and another right if for uh, your three single core cables so the magnitude of this voltage may be 50 to 200 volt per kilometer and much more at short circuit that means if uh, three your seats are there if it is single core cable if it is not bond, not bonded okay uh, your uh, then there will be your what you call so circulating current cannot flow even it is bonded at one side also circulating current cannot flow but voltage will be induced and this voltage range is 50 to 200 volt per kilometer and it's much higher at short circuit in order to in order to avoid that risk of damage or danger arising in the presence of the seat voltages especially adjacent to terminal adjacent to terminals seats have to be bonded at both ends right that means we are allowing the circulating current to flow right later we'll see, i'll show you some diagram in order that the like the way the transposition the seat also has to be changed like this at a regular interval in order to avoid the risk of damage or danger arising from the presence of the seat voltages especially adjacent ter adjacent to terminals seats have to be bonded at both ends if this is done circulating current can flow because it will get a path both side it is uh, bonded right and seat losses occur but as the spacing between the core increases the loss also increases so methods of cross band bonding at joints are used by which circulating current seat losses can be virtually eliminated and the inter seat voltages kept small right so how how they are doing it i'll come to that that uh, 
uh, before going to the previous listing, this the way this is suppose cable 1, cable 2, cable 3, the three conductors are there, the way the transposition, so cross bonding of cable C, these are actually sheet, this, this dash green dash lines are the sheet. So, the way we do the transposition here also, after some time it will take the position here, it will take the position here, for this one also it will take position here, it will take position here, it will come there, it will take the position here and it will take the position of this thing, right. So, it is something like your what you call that your uh, uh, this uh, your uh, um, uh, that transposition of the transmission line, right? That way, that way it is. That way it is. That way it is done. Uh, just hold on. If I have that um, uh, diagram, I will see if it is there or no. It is not here, right? But anyway, so this kind of your what you call uh, that uh, uh, this kind of uh, your regular interval this uh, changing is possible, then what will happen? Circulating current will almost be mainly eliminated, right. So, cross bonding employs a transmission may your transposition method involving systematic interruption and cross connection of sheath at each interruption, right. So, this way things are done. The sheath of conductor 1 here, diagram is here, sheath of conductor 1, this is the conductor 1, cable 1, sheath of conductor 1 connected to conductor 2, then sheath of conductor 2 that is the sheath of con connected to conductor your 3 and sheath of conductor 3 connected to conductor 1 the, the way at regular interval at regular interval right at suitable intervals at suitable intervals. So, this way circulating current can be minimized since the seen voltage is equal say that sheath voltages are equal and displaced by 120 degree for balance load the circulating currents are eliminated. So, balance we are assuming for unbalanced load also circulating currents are, currents are very small, even if the unbalance is there, particularly for 11 kV cable and if it is a distribution system, then your it will be unbalanced, right. But anyway, in that case, your circulating currents are very small, right. So, that is that, this is actually the diagram, figure 3, that interseed vo inter voltage is limited to that of each section, figure 3. So, this is a cross bonding, this is a cross bonding. Next is armor is there in the cable, so we have to come to the armor loss also. Armor losses are partly due to the eddy currents in the armor and partly due to hysteresis. So, eddy current and hysteresis both are there in the armor, you have to consider all this, right. So, the losses due to eddy currents are of greater importance, it is not as standard practice to provide single core cables with armor of magnetic materials because of large armor losses and larger inductive line reactance. Therefore, in multi core cables the armor losses are generally negligible for conductor section less for, for conductor section less than 200 sorry conductor it will be cross section right conductor cross section that is cross sectional area uh, cross section less than 200 millimeter square, but may be as high as 20 percent of conductor resistance. Uh, loss for the same three core cables, right. So, armor loss also you have to consider, I mean everything you have to consider, right. If sheath loss is equal to say lambda 1 into conductor loss, actually I uh, those who have taken my previous course, actually uh, I my habit has become lambda like this, but actually it is like this, right. But anyway throughout this I will use this, right. So, if sheath loss is equal to lambda 1 into conductor loss and armor loss say is equal to lambda 2 into conductor loss. Therefore, R effective is equal to R A C plus you have to consider that your uh, la uh, la lambda uh, 1 into conductor loss. So, hence it will it will be R A C effective will be R A C into 1 plus lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So, all these things you have to find out to get the cable resistance, right. This is R effective. So, this is for resistance. Next one is that conductor inductive reactance, right. So, reduction due to mutual coupling with the sheath, this is generally small except in some case cases such as large single core cables with aluminum sheath, right. So, that is that your conductor, uh, conductor inductive reactance. Right? So, it is it will reduce due to the mutual coupling with the sheath, right. 
but this is generally small except in some cases such as large single core cables with aluminum sheet. Reduction due to the lower effective spacing between cables with conductors of cross section other than circular. If you do not use circular other cross section then it will be there, but generally circular conductors. right? Increase due to mutual coupling with the armor of three core cables. This may be to an extent of 10 percent. So, increased mutual coupling with the armor of three core cables this may be due to an because, because you have a mutual coupling and if mutual coupling is there naturally that your inductance will increase. right? So, for next is so up to this all most of the theories and uh, my suggestion is that just uh, read a book and if you have any doubt we will uh, we'll answer your all questions. right? So, now one example this example when I will give you before going to theory further uh, one thing I will not tell you this is you will do it that uh, calculate the inductance per kilometer of a 3 core belted cable written 37 plus 0.238 centimeter what is this 0 0.238 right. I will solve I give the solution, but I will not tell you will find it out right 37 I will tell and core core insulation 0 0.5 centimeter thick neglect the effect of mutual coupling with sheet and armor right. So, mutual coupling uh, we will not consider we neglect look. So, 37 means it is 37 strand that inductance chapter uh, we have seen now 37 first conductor above that 6 conductor then 12 then 18. So, so that means 37 standard conductor has a central strand surrounded by uh, one central strand surrounded by 3 layers containing 6, 12 and 18 right. So, uh, that means it is stands respectively this is that is single center conductor then above that 6 then above the 12 then above the 18 right. Now, the overall conductor radius 0 0.238 into 3.5 4 centimeter we are making it. Now, my question is it is written 0 0.238 then what is 0 0.238 for the conductor and why are I, why I am multiplying by point uh, sorry 3.5. You will draw the diagram first one conductor then 6 conductor then 12 then 8 and then you try to find out this is an exercise for you right. So, the geometric mean this is R dash is 0 0.7788 into 0 0.834 it is coming 0 0.6495 centimeter. Now, distance between the conductor center is uniform and therefore, d eq, d eq equal to it will be 2 into 0.5 plus 0.834 this you draw and this is an exercise for you and you do this. So, 2.668 centimeter this is d equivalent. In the power system analysis course many student directly send to the mail uh, that regarding uh, divided clarification, but I think I have answered to everyone right and uh, maybe just uh, next day I have given the answer to all their questions right. Uh, next we know L is equal to 0.4 this formula will get from induction to inductance chapter. So, 0 0.4605 log that is base 10 d e q r dash that is whatever it comes it will become 0 0.2825 milli n v per kilometer right. Next uh, numericals will come later. Next uh, let us uh, come to the your what you call uh, in parameters of single core cable. So, insulation resistance we have to find out look how it is. Now, this is figure 4 this I have taken from a book instead of drawing it. So, this is the conductor and this is the sheet and whatever it is. So, the single core cable of conductor radius r its radius is r the cable has a sheet of inside radius r. So, this is capital r inside radius is capital r right the insulation resistance d r d capital R i n s that is the suffix insulation stand for d r n s of an analysis of thickness d x at radius x e. So, we are considering at a distance x this annular ring of thickness d x right. The way you are doing for your what you call for your uh, uh, inductance capacitance calculation same philosophy right only formulas are different. So, this is the cross section of a single core cable right. Therefore, we can write uh, we uh, we know that uh, therefore, d r insulation is equal to rho right into d x divided by uh, divided by 2 pi x ohm per meter 
this is say equation 1 right rho is the resistivity of the insulating material in ohm meter right the insulation resistance can be given as limit your uh, small r to capital r this is your small r to capital r uh, therefore your r insulation integration r to r rho upon 2 pi then dx upon x so r insulation is rho upon 2 pi ln capital r by small r this is equation 2 if the cable has a length of l meter then insulation resistance is rho upon 2 pi l in ln r by r ohm because uh, if you think the dimension wise this is actually ohm meter right. Uh, so, rho is the resistivity of the insulating material in ohm meter. So, d x is meter d x in meter part pi is dimensionless. So, rho is ohm meter. So, it is ohm meter therefore, if the cable has a length l. So, it is it is it is its dimension is ohm meter, but if the cable has a length of l meter then you divide by l l then insulation resistance will be rho upon 2 pi l ln r by r ohm right because this is actually ohm meter right. So, average value of rho for impregnated paper varies from 5 into 10 to the power 12 to 8 into 10 to the power 12 ohm meter at 15 degree Celsius right. So, this is how we find we will take a small rho is the your what you call resistivity of the insulating material this value is known into d x divided by 2 pi x because you want to find out in ohm meter. Then we are changing it to if length of the cable is l then we are dividing it by rho upon 2 pi l the ln r upon r ohm right. Therefore, the change in resistivity of insulating materials with temperature is described by the equation this is the uh, rho t is equal to rho 0. Uh, e to the power minus alpha t this is equation 4. Now, where rho t is the resistivity at 3 degree Celsius, rho 0 is the resistivity at 0 degree Celsius and alpha is a constant right. Next is capacitance. Since the single core cable that is figure 4 has an arc metallic sheet I mean this figure uh, this figure just hold on that is this metallic sheet is there this figure right. Since the single core cable has an arc metallic sheet there is an electric field between the conductor and sheet. So, therefore, let the charge on the surface of the conductor be q coulombs per meter length of cable right. So, let the ch ch we are assuming the charge on the surface of the conductor q coulomb per meter length of the cable then what will be the electric flux. Therefore, the electric flux density d x at a radius x is d x is equal to capital D x is equal to q upon 2 pi x this is coulomb per meter square. Uh, this is c I have written actually it is coulomb per meter square right. So, the electric field intensity e x at radius x at is given by capital E suffix x e x is equal to capital D suffix e x by epsilon r epsilon 0 is equal to this d x you substitute then you will get q upon 2 pi epsilon r epsilon x volt per meter this is equation 5. Where epsilon r is a relative permittivity that is a dielectric constant of the cable insulation and epsilon 0 you know from your capacitance chapter in transmission line 8.854 in 10 to the power minus 12 farad per meter. Therefore, the potential difference between the core and the sheet is V is equal to that is integrate for small r to capital R then capital E x d x right. So, E x is this much you substitute and integrate you will get q upon 2 pi epsilon 0 epsilon r ln capital R by small r volt this is equation 6 right. Therefore, capacitance will be Therefore, capacitance will be your between core and C it is your C is equal to you know C is equal to q by v. So, if you substitute it will be the q by v will be 2 pi epsilon into epsilon divided by l n capital R by small r this is equation 7 right. Next is that equation 7 is for single core cable, but it is also applicable to most of the 3 core cable this is 3 core cable used at 11 kV 
because these cables have an arc metallic screen around each core and or have separate sheets for each core. Right. If the conductor is not circular, the radius r may be taken as 1 upon 2 pi into actual periphery. Right. Just we will take the arc actually. Right. So, into actual periphery. So, substituting this value of q from equation 6, right, that means from this equation, from equation 6, this value, whatever you have got so for this thing, substitute the value of q from equation 6, right, from this equation. So, in equation 5, if you do so, if you uh, do so, the potential gradient at a radius x can be given as in terms of v, right. Uh, this is directly I am doing it, just you please put it, that is all, then you will get it, right. So, E x is equal to V upon then x L n capital R by small r, this is equation 8. Now, the maximum potential gradient occurs at x is equal to r, when uh, x is equal to r, that is at the surface of the conductor, when r, at very simple, because when r is small, that is x is equal to r, right naturally uh, it, uh, your d e x will be potential gradient will be higher. So, that is at the surface of the conductor. Uh, so therefore, we can write E max is equal to E r is equal to V upon putting x is equal to r V upon r l n r by r this is equation 9, right. The minimum potential gradient will occur when x is equal to capital R and is given by that is at the, that is your outer radius, right. So, in that case, E mean is equal to R capital V upon capital R L n capital R by when x is equal to capital R. So, maximum is V upon R L n R upon R capital R upon small r and minimum is V upon capital R by L n R upon R. This is equation 10, right. So, from equation, the, now what you do? You divide equation 9 by equation 10, that is ratio you take that E max, e max by E mean, right. If you do so, if you do so, then you will get the same thing E max by E min is equal to capital R i small r, right. Therefore, this above analysis assume that the conductor is perfectly circular. We have assumed this analysis conduct the circular conductor standing of the conductor increases E max by about 20 percent, it is right. And for a given value of V and capital R, there is a uh, your uh, certain value of r which gives a minimum value of E max, right. So, for a given value of V and capital R, there is a certain value of r which gives a minimum value of that means, that I, that means you have to find out a relationship between capital R and small r. r is of course, given, V is also given, right. So, equation 9 shows that E max is minimum when r l n r by r is maximum, that means, that means this one, right this E max, E max will be minimum when R L n R upon R is maximum, right. So, that means there must be relationship between capital R and small r, right. So, E max is minimum when this one. So, what will happen? You have to take the derivative of this one and set it to 0. So, this happens when so DDR in the of R L n capital R or small r is equal to 0, you take the derivative and simplify, you will get capital R is equal to 2.718 that is your small r, right. Typically, it is value of you will find that is E, right. So, the practical application of this result is limited, but it indicates that in high voltage cables for a given value of voltage and capital R, there is a minimum value of the conductor radius which must be used to keep the E max within limit, right. The design of high voltage cables based on equation 12, this one gives a high value of R, which much too, uh, this much too large from the point of view of current carrying capacity. That means, this uh, uh, your what you call that, uh, that for you, you I have to choose very high value of R. Uh, that is much too large for the point of a current carrying capacity. So, this formula, this is mathematics, but in reality it, it, it is not used actually, right. But you have some, you have some ideas, right. So, method like using stranded conductor 
around the central core of him and using a central uh, lead tube instead of him PTC have been suggested to increase the value of R so that E max is low. However, it may be noted that the variation of E max with R is not large when R changes uh, from 0.5 R to 0.25 R E max changes just by about 6 percent right. But some ideas you have regarding this E max minimum value of E max right. So, next is this is I hope uh, these things is understandable to you right only thing is that this derivative one uh, this derivative one you please do it and find out that r is equal to 2.718 smaller capital r is equal to right so methods like using standard conductors uh, this is gone next we will come to the dry electric loss this is another important aspect for the cable so this diagram i'll come later so a cable has a capacitance between the core and the sheet right that we have seen when a voltage is applied to an unloaded cable a capacitive current that is charging current flows right so in that case what will happen since the your since the resistivity of the insulation is not infinite a leakage current flows and a power loss a power loss occurs because insulation resistivity is not infinity so power leakage current will be there and power loss will be there so with ac voltages this phenomena of dielectric absorption also contributes to the power loss right so thus a cable behaves as an imperfect capacitor and the total current under unloaded conditions leads the voltage not by 90 degree but by an angle 90 degree minus delta that means it has some your what you call k it is not a pure capacitor but it has some imperfect capacitor we call because losses occurs that dielectric absorption right also contributes to the power loss so that's why it's shown in figure 5 the angle delta is termed as loss angle of di dielectric that means this is your current say and this is your voltage and uh, this is that phase angle between current and voltage is phi right so this delta is equal to 90 degree minus phi and delta we call that loss angle right this is actually phasor diagram of imperfect capacitor otherwise current and voltage should have been 90 degree current leading the voltage 90 degree but in this case as the, that the, your the losses occur that is dielectric loss that is why this is called loss angle delta right so it is current and voltage it is not 90 degree so and phase angle between current and voltage is phi and delta is equal to 90 degree minus phi and this is called actually loss angle right it is termed as a loss angle of dielectric now the dielectric loss generally we know formula p d is equal to v i cos phi because this is my voltage this is current and angle between this is phi so it is v i cos phi and phi is and your what you call and uh, your phi is equal to 90 degree uh, minus delta phi is equal to 90 degree minus delta right so it is cos 90 degree minus delta so it is vi sin delta therefore pd is equal to and your uh, your i is equal to omega c i is equal to omega c v no that's why omega c v square is coming so basically your i is equal to omega c into v right so here you substitute omega c into v so p d is equal to omega c v square sin delta so this is equals to equation 12 right so where c is the capacitance of the cable and v is the line to neutral voltage v is line to neutral voltage right it is n stands for neutral so this is your what you call that that means uh, your what you call that uh, loss angle and dielectric loss then happens in the cable right so this is your uh, this thing so thank you